Hey guys, today I'll be showing you something a little bit different here today. So it's not synthesizer related, but more car related. Um, and to be specific, we're looking at electronic ignition systems. So this is actually how you get electronic ignition in your old 70s cars. And the same theory of operation works for General Motors, other companies as well. This, this setup happens to be out of my 1976 Datsun 280Z. So for you Z car owners out there, this may be very helpful for you. Uh, just to kind of show you how this works. Um, but first of all, before we get into all this, we're going to get back into some history here. So before you had electronic ignition, you had a point system. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard the term points. Oh, I've got to clean my points. Or, oh, you know, the, the points aren't working. If you've watched any old car videos, if you're into cars. Well, basically what it was is before you had electronic ignition, these points went inside your distributor. So this is actually the distributor here. Typically you'd see this thing with a cap on it and you'd see the spark plug cables coming out of it. Well, your points would actually sit down inside here and on a little cam. They actually rode on a little cam. As the shaft rotates, these, these contacts would open and close. And so the point of that was to actually energize your ignition coil because you don't want to leave this thing on. Um, it's actually got such a, a uh, low turns windings on the on the primary side that you'll actually burn it up if you leave it on for more than like a few milliseconds. So what it, this actually the job of this thing is is actually it converts 12 volts into 40,000 volts. So it's a very high output voltage, and that's actually what arcs across your spark plugs to ignite the fuel. So it gives you a good hot spark to to ignite the fuel. That's the whole point in an ignition system. So these points, they would basically mate, and after a while, you're, you're physically making and breaking a connection. And you're talking about some current draw, because you've got such a low turns on these that you actually draw some current every time those things arc, or every time this thing is energized, that it actually arcs in the, inside those contacts. And as most of you know, as you get an arc, you actually start building carbon you actually start getting a carbon buildup and eventually you, you get so much resistance in there that it won't arc or the, the contacts actually won't mate. So it was always a big, you know, a big job. You'd have, always have to keep your points cleaned, you know, and then sometimes even back in the day you'd have to pull off the side of the road and clean the points if you lost spark. So they were kind of a, a they were kind of a, a nuisance. They work, but they, they had a lot of issues with the reliability and, you, and it was probably the primary problems with the ignition systems back in the day was you had to make sure your points were clean. Well, what this system does is it did away with the points. So instead of having points, you have a set of, of uh, a pickups. So this is a look inside another distributor I have here. And this is actually how it converts mechanical motion of the engine into electronic, electronic signal. So what we have here is we have you can see the shaft rotates. You've got what you call a reluctor, and you can see these little teeth on it. And these two black boxes right here are actually pickups. So as these pass over those pickups, it actually creates a voltage. So it's actually a, a voltage generator. Now, what's interesting for you guys that, that follow my videos on musical instruments, you've heard me talk about something very similar to this in Hammond organs. So the old tone wheel organ is a, another example of of converting a, a mechanical motion into frequency. And uh, basically it's a lot different scale. This is uh, putting out a lot more voltage and the teeth are different so it don't have the same frequency response as an organ. But the same concepts here. This is the same concept. And actually I can show you that. So I've got this distributor hooked up here to this box. But this box is not powered. I have no juice going to this box right now. If we look here, I've actually got my, my box turned off that's powering everything. I'm going to show you that you can actually generate AC off this actual reluctor setup. So I've got my scope hooked up to this yellow wire here, hooked to one of these pickups. And as I rotate this with my hand, I've got the rotary button on this one still so I can rotate it with my hand. If you watch the blue line on the scope, I've got a yellow line and a blue line. The yellow line is going to represent the output of the box which you won't see yet because I don't have it powered. But as I rotate this, this uh, distributor, you can see I've got a, a voltage there. And of course, I'm turning it at different RPMs. It's not real stable. But you can see I can generate basically a signal off this distributor. 
and you can kind of see what that looks like in there. You can see that reluctor turning against those pickups and we're getting that that signal. Now I could hook a motor to this and actually run this thing and you'd see a, 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 a higher frequency and you'd see you'd have more of those, of those signals. But that shows you right there, I don't have any voltage on it and we're generating at least one volt almost of, of signal right there. So that's how it actually gets a signal for the box. Now what the box does is it actually cleans that signal up and amplifies it a little bit and also has circuitry in there for filtering because when this thing arcs at 40,000 volts it has to make sure there's nothing that will interfere with this with you know fake triggers. So what this box does is it basically takes that signal and it connects to the ground side or the negative side of your of your coil. Um, and so what it does, it actually turns on, it shorts the ground, basically what this box does. Which, back to musical instruments, you've, some of you guys have heard me talk about Moog synthesizers and the S-trigger. Well, this is basically an S-trigger. So what it's doing is when this thing actually gets that pulse, it actually triggers the ground through a transistor. It turns on a transistor, pulses it, based off the rotation, and it will reference this to ground, allowing this thing to fire. And that's how it works. <laughs> that's pretty much how it works in a nutshell. So what I'm going to do now is I've actually got a, a bulb set up here in place of where the coil would be. So we're going to turn on the, the 12 volts here to the box. The box is now powered. And when we actually rotate this, you'll see it fires the light. That would, that would represent the coil right there. This bulb represents the coil. So you can see I can rotate it pretty slow and you can see the, the pulse rotation. So I can get back here so I can show you. So you can see how that works. So the faster I rotate it, the more pulses I get. And so basically that's how it works. This is actually what's firing the coil. Now, back to what I was talking about earlier as far as you got two pickups in here. Well, California models only have one, but what the point of the second pickup is is pretty simple. It's a it's a electronic advance. <laughs> and so what it does is basically this box hooks to a a there's a, a, a temperature uh, sensor that hooks into the, the head of the engine for the coolant. And when it's below 140 degrees roughly that uh, that shorted that actual sensors shorted the ground. And basically it turns on a or, or it turns on a relay and it causes it to only look at one set, one of these coils. And then when it shuts off, it looks at the other coil. So basically one of these coils is out of phase from the other one, so that's how it actually advances the timing, is how that works. And I can show you right here, I've actually got a, a my manual here, and you can kind of see how this works. So this is your temperature uh, sensor. It's actually a th what you call a thermo time switch, very similar to a thermo time switch. And so basically when the temperature is below 140, this thing is closed, making this thing have a circuit turning on this, this relay, which actually opens the contacts here. So when these are open, it's actually looking at one side of these, one of these pickups. And then when it's off, it turns on, it looks at the other pickup. And that's how it gets its different, its different uh, phase, basically, for advanced timing. And actually right now, this sensor is bad on my Z, so I actually use a jumper wire to ground out this relay to make it kick on, or, and then run it as a advanced timing when it's cold weather. So it kind of works, I just unplug the gator clip when, it, when it's warmed up. So that's a way around it. But that's basically how this works. Um, for those that don't know where this stuff is in the car, well this is of course on the engine, and then this is the uh, under the dash. This is actually under the pa the passenger side dash, and uh, so that's where all this is located. So also you got something too, which excuse me, you've also got something too called vacuum advance, which hooks right here. So this actually hooks to your vacuum on your on your car, and it actually changes the plate of where those pickups are, and so that's how it changes the timing. That's how everything works together. So vacuum advance, electronic advance. And then retard, which is actually the other pickup, that's what it's called, it's retarding the timing. And so that's how this all works. And uh, so it's just really interesting how that works. Now in most most uh, 
most distributors that still had pickups, well, actually all of them, that still had uh, points, you actually still had vacuum advance that would change the plate that that mounted to. So it actually, you know, changed the the timing based off load, or how much vacuum was in the uh, was in the intake. It's kind of how that works. So it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty cool concept. So actually, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pop my hood and I'll show you what this looks like on a car. Just kind of show you the locations of it, so you can actually physically see where this is. Something I did forget to show you just a little while ago is actually the two signals on the scope. So you'll see the blue signal now has a little voltage floating on it without it actually turning. But as we rotate it, you'll actually see the yellow uh, signal, which is actually representing the negative or the ground side of, your, of the, of the uh, ignition coil connection firing. So as we rotate it, you can see right here, you can see it's actually in phase there. And you can see how that works. So that's the, that's the two signals together right there. You can see I'm rotating it, and there's our other probe right there. You can see it's actually on that negative side where the coil connects, and that's what we're getting right there. So pretty cool stuff. Okay, so now looking inside the car here, this is your distributor. This is the part that you saw on my bench. You can see that vacuum advance module right here, which connects the vacuum. Here's your ignition coil, and then that's actually where, you, where it comes in after the spark. Sorry about the noise. And you can see my advanced timing setup here where I actually uh, electronically advance it by a gator clip when it's cold weather. So that's kind of how that works. And then if we go over here, so we'll go over here, and this is actually looking under the passenger side dash. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. There's the box. I don't know how well you can see that. But it's basically right here. It mounts to the to the side, the kick panel of the of the Z, and so that's how that works. But uh, anyways, guys, I thought I'd just take a minute here and show you how the electronic ignition system works on a uh, on a 1970s car here, and uh, it's really fascinating, really neat how that's progressed along the years. And nowadays, you don't even have a distributor. All this is gone. You don't even have ignition coil like this anymore. Now you got individual coils for your for your uh, cylinders and it's actually got what they call a position sensor for your crank and that's how it works it's, it's all computerized now uh, through software and all kind of stuff that's how you get so much accurate timing now rather than this old system we have to actually physically adjust a mechanical object but uh, anyways guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and uh, hopefully this helps some of you guys out with your Z cars as well as just a good explanation of how electronic ignition systems work. But uh, you guys take care and I'll be more to come here very soon.